don't know if yes the internet can see us now so that's good right yeah that but it seems like a plus um it's lagging behind isn't it well yeah but they don't know that oh think about it i know it's just weird to see myself yeah my and it's like one second not, late it's yeah. weird hi everybody that's pretty late um let me try to figure out how to link internet to this feed so everybody can watch and enjoy it in the privacy of their own home. Uh, let's see. It seems like it should just give you that link. It's weird that it does. Okay. You were. I just realized something. Let me check. Okay. Continue. You just got right behind me. Um, let's see. I mean, people know I'm here. I'm not like a secret. Uh. I'm just afraid of myself. Say, stream phone. options no monetization no no um oh there's live chat okay hey cool oh cool okay fun all right i found the link uh okay i'm just tweeting and then we'll have fun i promise yeah there's needles up on the real quick thing Don't tweet anything. I'm looking at Twitter right now. I mean, don't ask your questions right now. I'm looking at Twitter. I won't see them. Okay. I'm talking to the internet. Oh, okay. Max, fun drive, come hang out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to turn on this, and then you can retweet that. And then I'll retweet it from the Sawbones account. So now the internet is fully aware. Um, okay. There's also a button for super chat. I'm going to turn that on. Don't know what that does, but that's fun. Yeah. Um, you are just bound and determined back there. It's quite all right. Okay. Um, seems like we navigated away. Um... It says we're off now. Is that right? We're live, right? There we go. Okay. This sucks because you're so rad and I want to be here. Okay. Um, there, I'm going to maximize this. And then okay. we can see. Perfect. All right. So, here we are. Hi. Hi. Um... Hello everyone, it's Max Fun Drive time, and uh, Sydney and I thought, well, we don't have anything to do tonight. So let's hang uh, out. Our child is asleep. <sighs> we both work today, mm -hmm. and my mom watched her and wore her out. Yeah, and I had ran I, around in circles. I didn't do Taekwondo today, so I have the physical energy to and the sort of spiritual reserve to be able to communicate with you like this. Um, so hi everybody, a lot of highs. I'm loving that. Mm -hmm. um, a good start yeah so let's just like get down to it first off let's say it's max fun drive time um and we're super excited because we're approaching nineteen thousand. yeah we're getting there we just uh uploaded uh we played dungeons and dragons with lynn and that's hysterical um he had never played before so that was really fun um and uh thank you for the compliment to my excellent t-shirt um, it was they're purchased. asking what belt you're at too, so don't forget to answer. I'm yellow belt. Yeah. Still. Um, no, I just didn't have class. Lucas, I only have class on Mondays and Wednesdays. If you all want to ever want to come on out, uh, <laughs> Mondays and Wednesdays, try to say Taekwondo, noon. Come on down, do some class with me. It'll be fun. Audio Justin. is ahead of visual. I think if you restart, someone said if you reload the thread that uh, reload the page it'll fix it justin takes a taekwondo class with one other uh adult and a five-year-old that's not true that's a lie sydney likes to tell when he tested for his belt it was one other adult and a five-year-old okay fine he didn't have to fight the five-year-old which i was happy about because i don't know who i would have rooted for um let's let's like let's take some questions the first one is from william it says how's the slope carb going and also, what's Sydney's opinion of the science of low-carb thing? 
or the slow carp thing. Um, I'll say it was a little bit unimpressive for the first two weeks. I lost like four pounds, which is good. And Sydney tells me it's like healthy weight loss, but yeah, one to two pounds a week is for as like healthy, sustainable weight loss. For as like strict as this is, um, I kind of expected more. The first time I did uh, low carb, not slow carb, low carb, I lost like seventeen pounds in two weeks, and it was like so good. Not sustainable. Not sustainable. I know. No. You, um, and you get you gained it back. So I, which I, a lot of people do. And I gained That's it back. The problem with the because I hate eating that way. Um, I despise it. I did it for like seven months, and I lost a lot of weight, but I gained it back because I hate eating like that. Um, Sydney, science of, of low carb, slow carb, what do you think? I think it's, I think it's okay. I mean, I think, okay, I tell patients this a lot that there was a big meta-analysis of a bunch of different diets, meaning a big study that looked at a lot of studies of like low carb, low fat, low calorie, and if you do them right, you can lose weight with any of them. So I think it's fine to do something like this where you still get carbohydrates because when Justin did the Atkins thing, he was sick. He felt awful. And well, you we weren't dating to... when I did the Atkins no, thing. No, but we, well, no, we redid it. Remember? Oh, we tried again. It's tried really again. hard. You feel like there's a flu. I actually did it for a month and then I quit. It's really it hard sucked. onboarding. But you yeah. seem okay, and you're eating now. He is eating a lot of beans, and I personally find beans in large quantities kind of they yuck me out. So yeah. I'm not going to get beans. Like that. Fine. I don't know. No, I'm fine. All right. Um, so but, that's, but that's, I think it's okay. I'm, I don't have any problem with it nutritionally. He did try to take a bunch of potassium supplements, um, and that don't please don't please do not take over the counter potassium supplements. Talk to your doctor if you think you need potassium. Talk to your doctor. You can overdose on potassium. Please, everybody, please. Uh, I'm gonna make this announcement on a daily basis in front of my office. Yeah, uh, Josh Joshua asked about my fitness pal. I like my fitness pal. I use my fitness pal for, even though I'm not counting calories, I still use it for, I think it's good for weight tracking and for, um, they got this neat thing where you compare your photos. So that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, I, I loosely use my fitness pal. Yeah. Um, you grab one. Do you have any advice for someone about to start medical school in the fall? This is from Hannah. Uh, do everything you enjoy doing now. <laughs> oh, no. dunk. No, I'm kidding, Hannah. It's not. I Just have a lot of fun and relax and read all the books that have nothing to do with medicine that you want to now. I mean, don't try to, like, study ahead of time or prepare for medicine. They'll teach it to you. You'll learn it then. I, uh, I think I read all the Harry Potter books the summer before I started medical school. Yeah. I think it's the thing I did. Yeah. So, yeah, just, like, relax, unwind read good books that would be my advice yeah because you're um, about to study a lot and try to find try to find time brief moments brief impactful moments where you can take care of yourself for like 10 minutes 15 minutes because i think even that can help to improve your state if you're like i'm taking a bath for 20 minutes and i'm not doing anything oh while i was in med school yeah, well, yeah med absolutely school. give you've got to take care of yourself because it's a it's a long haul it's a marathon um, my doctor is really nice and listens to me, but is an anti-vaxxer and practices Ayurvedic medicine as well as regular medicine. I'm torn. Thoughts? Um, they're not a real doctor. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to a fake doctor. You should go to a real doctor. Don't be torn. Just to, just leave because they don't practice science, and that's what doctors do. Oh, that's tough. I, well, let it's me not say, tough. No, I made it really I know, easy. I know what you're saying because of the vaccine thing. The vaccine thing would be the deal breaker for me. That's easy. I, think I know some... Uh, physicians who practice things like Ayurvedic medicine alongside what we would think not of a problem like with that not a problem with Western that I think medicine. That there's... yeah and I don't really have a problem with that um, but I, there is no reason not to get vaccinated well unless you have like a medical specific reason you can't get a certain vaccine obviously there are but generally speaking no if a doctor doesn't believe in vaccines I don't I don't understand how they're a doctor yeah um, yeah uh, someone asked, "How do we feel about West Virginia legalizing miracle marijuana?" I think we're one word away from a pretty cool state, is what I would miracle say. Miracle marijuana. Medical marijuana. Actually, <laughs> is what I said. Medical marijuana. I didn't say miracle. Did I say miracle? Almost. It's basically it's the same thing. It would be it great. Passed, I was actually just reading this. It passed the Senate. It's got to pass the House. So it's. We gotta make some money somehow. I, yeah, I. You know what? Um, we have a terrible opioid epidemic in the state, as most people know. And um, I don't know. I need studies. If if I knew that marijuana controlled pain better than opiates, I think it's probably a much safer thing for people to be on than chronic opiates. So, so I don't. I don't have a big problem with it. I just would love some more studies. I, they need to schedule it a schedule two, 
so that we can actually do it. We're in Schedule 3, so we can do some decent studies on marijuana and see what it can actually do. Uh, Jeremy asked about salvia. That's no good. Let's don't do that. Just stay away That's from that w- It's not, it's not, uh, they used to market it as legal weed. No. It's not that. No. Somebody, okay, people keep asking about my shirt. Sydney, can you tell them the story about my shirt? There is a uh, little, uh, is it like a little, I think it's a VTech person. Where is it? Where's the little guy? Probably by there somewhere. Yeah. You want to look real quick? You're, you're using I'll go look. There's a little guy, a little toy that Charlie plays with that looks just like Justin. You go find it. You find the toy okay. and I'll ask, I'll okay. answer, you, you keep I'm going to answer that. one video game question. Well, Sydney's gone. One video game question. There's my cat. Oh, there's CJ. Huh? I'm trying to get CJ to come over here. She's too bulky. I think little Justin may be at mom's house. Okay. So there's a little um there's a little yeah, VTech person that looks a lot like me that Charlie thinks looks like me. Um, and it that, looks just like Justin. Yeah, and it's wearing this shirt. So Riley made it, I think. She had it. Yeah, Riley had, had it made for Justin. Riley had it made for Christmas, so I could match that guy exactly. It does. It looks just like Justin, and he even does this Justin McRoy thing. Anytime Justin's somewhere, anytime we travel anywhere, and he's got to take a picture, like at a landmark. At a landmark. I mean, we have everywhere all over the world. Like in front of Stonehenge, he's like, like this, like presenting uh-huh. this thing. And the guy's doing that. Yeah, it's pretty good. But. Um, uh, the, 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 Which McRoy is the best at Mario Kart? Probably Griffin. Probably Griffin. Is he the best at all video games? Um, of you guys? Yeah. yeah. Madison says, speaking of which, still buffering is great. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. I love doing it. Um, if anybody has that VTech thing, I guess... Uh, tweet me a picture of it. <laughs> I have a picture somewhere. You have a picture but... on your phone, maybe? That way we can hold that up to the camera. That's not my phone. That's, That's not your a... phone at all. <laughs> the TV remote. Here. I know you got a picture of it in there somewhere. Yeah. Um... Um... Is FMV Quest returning? Yes. Uh, because it's fun to do. Um, you're looking at the feed, so look at the pictures. All right, people are saying nice things. That's great. Everybody, don't say anything nice for 30 seconds. Somebody asked how you got connected with Jesse. How did I get connected with Jesse? Mm -hmm. That's a good story. This is, well... I mean, I don't know that's a great story, but, like, that's an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, one of our listeners Mm -hmm. recommended the show, um, in the Max Fun forums. And Jesse and Teresa, if memory serves, they were, like, on a road trip. And they listened to, like, three episodes of it. And this would have been... (sighs) <sighs> late 2010 when they did listen to it and they thought that it was a good program and they um, they uh, added us to the network. That's about it. Um, we had been Max Fun fans for a long time so it was a little surreal. Ah, they, somebody found the tweet of that toy. Yeah, I thought I tweeted it. Yeah, you tweeted it but I don't know how to find that. Anyway, Man. somebody else will you. Um, and then you can find it. This, you guys are this, faster this, than me. Break, can this. I put it from my phone in your computer, though? Well, sweetie, you can hold it up with the camera. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was that thing where I pushed the airdrop button. And things we're, float. Are we allowed to turn music on? I don't, then people can't hear us. I know, I just want some music. Some jams. Here it is. Alright, well... No one. Sydney Did Charlie get... ever kick Travis's ass? No. All right, you answer questions then, because you're no, going to be too Travis. lazy. She loves Travis and Griffin, and she loves all her brothers, her her uncles and aunts, her brothers and sisters. Um, my favorite disease. What's our favorite diseases? What is your favorite disease? Uh, I've said this before, and I I feel bad. It f- feels bad to have a favorite disease, but the reason I got into medicine was Ebola. I read The Hot Zone, and I was fascinated, and I used to want to do infectious disease, but then I really like doing family medicine, because I can do a little bit of everything, and I did a global health track, so I can do, like, weird tropical stuff, too, that you don't get to see here every day, and so, um, but Ebola is why I'm a doctor. What's your favorite disease? Being a super taster is probably, does that count as one? Okay. 
Here, look. It's going to take a little while to catch up to see if I have the angle right. So I'm leaving this up for a little while. Yeah, there we go. See, it's Justin. So that's me. So, Riley made that. I don't like cheese, um, Jillian, so probably cream cheese. Uh, I've had a couple people there. Sorry, it scrolls so fast, I can't say your names before they're, it's gone. I'm gonna act fast. I know, a couple people asked me what I think of DOs. I work with DOs. We have a school of osteopathic medicine um, in the state of West Virginia, in Lewisburg. And I, I have a lot of their graduates as my fellow, as my colleagues, and uh, we take them as our residents. And I think that they can be just as excellent doctors as we can be. I mean, I don't want to say uniformly all DOs are perfect, because not all MDs are perfect. There, you know, there's variety in every profession. But I, I don't have any problem with DOs. I think they're, they're excellent DO physicians that I have known, admired. My mentor as a resident was a DO. So. Someone asked how we feel about self-diagnosis when it comes to mental illness. Um, I, I don't think that's a great idea. I don't think self-diagnosis is good for anything, but especially for mental illness, as somebody who's, like, had issues with mental illness before, it's really hard to use the thing that is not working well to figure out that it's not working well. Like, it doesn't really make sense if you think about it, because if your thinker's not working, you can't think your way out of it. Um, there are good resources for self-treatment, I think. Um, mm -hmm. and, I mean, talk therapy is obviously really useful, but... I think it's 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 tough diagnosing yourself, and that's my non-medical perspective, but that's just what I think. I think that's fair to say, because I think I see a range of people who come in and say, I think I have X, Y, Z, then after a long conversation and I get to know them, I agree. You know what? I think you're on the right track. I do think that's the issue. But just as often, I'll have someone come in and they really can't tell me what's wrong. They just know something's wrong, and after a long conversation, we get to that and they may not have been able to get there on their own. So I, I think it's a good idea to talk to a professional, um, whether it be, you know, as a family doctor, I do a ton of of psychiatric medicine. It's just part of my practice, but also a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a licensed counselor or therapist. I think sometimes it's a good idea to, you know, bounce those ideas off somebody who, who is experienced in this, for sure. Um, so another question. Uh, while I'm waiting for another question to come in, let me just say, go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate, and let's get this uh, party rolling. Um, uh, someone said, please come to the South. Texas and West Virginia are not the South. Uh, <laughs> so Texas, you're wrong. West Virginia, you're right. West Virginia is the only state that seceded from the, uh, the country to be part of the Union. So West Virginia is not the South, and anybody who tells you differently is lying, especially That's if they're right. from West Virginia and they have a Confederate flag anywhere on them, they're a dim bulb. <laughs> Sorry. That's true. We, we literally, true. literally the opposite is true. He said, forget you, Confederacy. We're headed north. Um. Uh, Aloha State, what do we think so far? Um... I think something is lost with it being set in America. This is Terrace House, a little state. Oh, I think <laughs> I thought I think, you just meant Hawaii. <laughs> no, I think something is. I mean, it seems beautiful. I've never been there. <laughs> something is lost. Uh, I think in the in the moving it to America. I think it loses mm -hmm. some of its. And it's not just like the cultural tourism. Um, mm -hmm. It's that. Uh, I think the pace of of the show feels different. In America, mm -hmm. um, and there are also somebody pointed this out to me. Not everybody is speaks um, Japanese as a first language, so I think that in, the conversations have a little bit less nuance. Mm -hmm. I think than in um, Boys and Girls in the City. I think you see that sometimes with uh, people switching into whichever language they actually feel more comfortable halfway through a conversation because they're having trouble expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. so. But it's a great show. It's still a great, still great show. Still great. It's still a great show. Also, it's hard with just eight. Like, I need to get deep. Uh, people keep asking, when are more Charlie and Daddy shows coming? It's really up to her. That's the truth. She has to stumble into my office and tell me she wants to make a podcast. That that usually is it. It's usually while Justin's working and, and on the days that I'm home with her. And 
she'll just say, I want to make a podcast and go wandering into Justin's office, but we don't, we very intentionally do not want to push that. We don't, <laughs> we don't want to be the people who are pushing our child to do a podcast. She just, every time she sits down at a laptop, she actually, that is what she thinks people do at laptops is make podcasts. And so she'll yeah. sit down at computers and say, I have to make a podcast and start talking and typing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's on her own. Sinaza for the win asked, do you think you'll ever purchase a never ending pasta pass again? I have gotten two pasta passes. One I bought, one was sent to me. I used them a grand total of once between the two. So I don't think I will do that again. Um, I don't really, here's the thing. Not a healthy choice? Come close. I like the shrimp, I like the chicken scampi and that's not covered. Girl. Girls, come on. Girls. Sorry, our cats are playing very loudly. I'm going to adjust so you can see them real quick. Um, uh, <laughs> getting pretty buck wild over there. Hold on. That's you. Okay. CJ. CJ. Be sweet. Yeah, they're getting a little, a little cray. Girls. Girls, come on. They love each other. Yeah, they're good. They're good yeah. pals. Mm. Now it's gonna be hard to get that angled back because of I the lag. I feel like it's down now. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know what we're pointing at now. That's just at my. Yeah, it's not bad. There, that's good. Okay. Where the questions go? Um. Those are yeah. Our cat's very beefy. She is a yeah, a beefy lady. Yeah. About that. She's a beefy Their names lady. are CJ for Claudia Jean, um, and Amelia. Um, somebody asked their wife and I are relatively new homeowners. Any tips? Um, uh. <laughs> I would say you know what? what do, I don't know. I would say don't be afraid to like take on like little projects that mm -hmm. you would like better. Don't be afraid to like fix stuff that you hate. Um, Sydney always hated the glass doors in our last house and the and the shower. The shower. I don't like shower doors. Yeah. They're... I very much, for the kinds of showers we're talking about, enjoy cooking. You have a phobia. I could have... fall through them, right? Yes. I have a terrible phobia. I'm going to crash through them. In like the, we're talking about like the tub showers. They're, it's fairly small. Like if we're talking about it like a hotel with the big giant showers, yeah. glass doors are okay. But... So Justin went and took down the glass doors for me. Um, that's true. So, but Putting like a hotel rod yeah that's the true curve thing and it's there to this day um but the, but that like that's the kind of thing i had no idea how to do that um beforehand so just take a shot and read on the internet you can find google tips about pretty much anything um have you been to the dentist yet somebody wants to know i don't Fox. next question i don't want to talk about that that's a no <laughs> folks that's a no don't trust them um did you hear They Might Be Giants are recording a new album starting Monday? That's very exciting. But also, I feel like at the like at the rate they release, they're like kind of always starting a new album, I feel like. Um, but I'll be really interested to see uh, what what I always like them. And I, th I thought their last release was, was really... You know, their last rock release was really good. I like the last kids album, too. Um, but uh, so I'll be excited to see what they come up with. Virginia asked me what was my least favorite part of medical school. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed getting out of the classroom, the lecture hall, and out into rotations a lot more. Um, but I will tell you, I would say there were a couple of rotations on which I had to do oral exams, oral final exams, where they tell you any of this material is fair game, and it's a lot of material. And you just sit there face to face with an attending physician and they can ask you any of those questions and you just have to kind of explain and defend your answers which is how you do like surgery boards and ob boards and some other i think ob boards surgery boards for sure your final boards that's not family medicine boards but those are probably the scariest things i've done in my career i mean you can do them if you study of course you can pass them but they're but they're very intimidating someone told me i'm super wrong about fruit um and that i don't i think that eating fruit eating as much fruit as you want all the time is not a recipe for healthiness because i think that fruit has a lot of sugar in it 
fruit does have a lot of sugar in it. I, I think that, I think that, this is a difficult question. I would rather people eat, if you're going to eat sugar, it's better to eat it in the form of fruit where you're getting other nutrients than like Skittles, you know, I mean, if we're comparing right. what sweet thing you're going to eat. And fruit has a lot of other good stuff in it for you, not just sugar. Um, but, yes, there is a limit. I mean, you shouldn't eat fruit all day. I agree with that because there is a limit to how much sugar is good for you, um, especially my diabetic patients I limit fruit in. You know, Weight Watchers doesn't count fruit, though, in their points, but it's just because, on average, Americans don't eat enough fruit. Uh, so, like, they don't want to discourage you from eating fruit. So, it's hard. Most of my patients rarely ever eat fruit. So, I'm not going to discourage them from eating them, uh, eating that at all. But if you're somebody who's eating fruit constantly all day, you're probably getting too much sugar. Um, yeah. You, and, and my thing is, the thing that works well about this diet is, like, for me, is that I don't have to count stuff. And I don't have to eat in moderation. I just have very stringent rules about what I can and can't eat. Um... And that works for me because I'm not good at moderating. So if it was like you can have one apple per day, then that would be like, or they then I know, would leave. Then you, I'd well, go far away. Yeah, it would keep Sydney away. <laughs> so that's science. Um, any tips for legitimate sugar addicts, Sydney? I was told to go cold turkey for two weeks, but that seems sketchy to me. Can I say straight up what I what I have what has been helpful to me? Um, is that I eat sugar one day a week, and by the end of that day, I'm pretty over it, honestly. I could, like, I could do without. Um, I also bought a bucket of donuts last Saturday, so mm -hmm. that's not helping things no, at I mean, all. It's not going to hurt you to go without, other than, like, you won't be happy. But how to kick it. So how to kick the ha Just, like, don't. Just don't eat it. Yeah. I mean, that's that, I mean, that's the only way. I don't, I don't think... I think, like, if you try to wean yourself off sugar, I think you're never going to get past that. I would that, say don't you know? eat it for, like, a fixed period of time. I mean, like, not eating for two weeks sounds like it's smart. Like, don't eat it for a fixed period yeah, of time. to try and to break the addiction. And then gradually, like, reintroduce and then, it. And then limit yourself and set very strict rules at first. I think you have to be very black and it's white like, about it in the beginning yeah. before you allow yourself it's to like kind how you of can, loosen up. It's like how you can quit smoking, and then you can just, after that, you can just, like... Enjoy some smoking. No. From time to time. No. It's mm -hmm. basically like that. No. Basically. Justin and I had this argument a lot before he finally quit smoking. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Um. Mm -hmm. I don't actually want to talk about my diet anymore. I'll I'll talk to y'all when I'm swole and cut. <laughs> um. How many people here would have to buy a Max Fund membership for us to kiss on screen? What are you talking about? That's like the... <laughs> that's that's pretty... Fe Guys. Oh, stop. I'll kiss, I'll kiss right now. If somebody goes and donates, promise... <laughs> prom <laughs> promise you'll donate. Here, no. What? What are you, my aunt? That's so weird. I'm going French later. The basement mooching piece. <laughs> since we lived it here yeah. um <laughs> let's see <laughs> yeah, we keep asking 25,000 donors equals live vivisection no ah, I'm, on, not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna section You're anything than that. <laughs> uh, can I make my cats kiss nope please Mer we go to maximumfund.org forward slash donate um, I, we really appreciate it. I can't believe the number on this stream keeps going up. <laughs> um, um, what do I have? Reese says, I one. love, I love, uh, this is a bit random, but I love your voice and I love listening to Sawbones. Oh, thank you. I love doing Sawbones. Should I sleep Ma in? Oh, Mackenzie asks, what do we love most about Huntington? Um, there aren't a lot of lines. Mm-hmm. Parking is usually not a problem. Yeah. Very little traffic. <laughs> but the, when there's like a something <laughs> popping off downtown, like a Toby Keith concert, what you will never see people more livid than Sydney and I when we when the infrastructure of Huntington collapses around itself due to I, a big concert downtown. We live in a in a small town. We should be able to find parking. Parking easily wherever all the time. Want. Like that's the trade off, that's right? The trade -off. Like we live in a small town. Don't have a pink berry, can park wherever I want. It's a contract. I, I mean I think you I think I love Huntington in the way that most people love their small hometown that has some really cool, quirky, fun things about it. 
Um, some things that maybe you're not the most thrilled with, but it's your home, you know everything, you know everybody, you get it, and you always want it to do better, and you're rooting for it to be the best it can be, and you see the good in it. I uh, think most people feel that way about their hometown. Right? Yeah. Um, I had a question, what was it like recording Dungeons & Dragons with Lynn? Um, it was really fun, he'd never played before. Um, we coaxed him into singing as much as possible. He did, like, some really gnarly bars on a robot that was, like, some sick, some sick shit if, if, that he just, like, dropped some heat on a robot. Um, like, eight bars on, like, what a bad, what how bad it would be to be a robot and how they can't experience love. But it was part of a spell he was casting. You really have to listen. Maximumfund.org forward slash donate. And then you'll get an email as to how you can listen. Um... The, but he's really fun, and he's like the nicest guy. Yes, he was a bard, Philip. Of course, of course, he was a bard. Um, he really is the nicest guy. He's the nicest guy. When you talk guy. to Lynn, he he talks to you like you're the most important person and the most interesting person he's ever talked to. Mm-hmm. And like early here, earlier, he was talking to James Spader or or whoever. And also um, like all he's accomplished, and he's yeah. he's like listening to you like that is so fascinating. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like really. We've told but, Lynn stories about like us directing children's theater shows in Huntington and he's still like "Mm, it's a sound he's listening to us as though we were um he's a cool dude uh Jesse asks how did I quit smoking um Alan Carr had a book called the stop smoking solution or something like that somebody in chat will give me the right name of it but um it's the best it's the best book that uh I I think I've ever read I know a lot of people I think Dave Holmes quit with that book I think I remember him saying on our uh, on the swap episode, what are, you doing? what are you trying to do? Somebody was asking me to give somebody a shout out, and I was trying to do it for. Well, then there'll be no living with them now. Sorry. They think we're handing out shout outs. Well, Evan was asking me to give the girlfriend, Elena, Alana, okay. Alana? a shout out. Alana. Alana. Have a good, have a good one, Alana. There. No she more like shout outs. She was gonna have a rough night. Yeah. So I was. Give him a quick shout out to no, you're good. Pe- you're good. You're good people. Um, Alan Carr's Smoke Less You Goon. I don't think that was right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Sydney for a second. I gotta get a plug for the computer. Yeah, the, the computer's out there. Justin also went to, um, here's a plug for health departments. He went to the, his lo- the local health department and went to classes, smoking cessation classes. Um, when I get back, I'm going to start high starting something. Okay. And vaping helped. Too. But that but book was really the turning point for him. That's when he stopped trying to be sneaky and thought he was hiding it from me. Which he wasn't. Um. So somebody asked me. I'm so bad at like keeping up with it. If I want another Jessica asked if oh, we are gonna have another baby anytime soon. I mean Charlie keeps asking for a little brother or sister, so we'll probably have to to figure that out sooner or later. Um. Let's see. How did I like doing the Sim Sam? Taylor wants to know. We really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we don't, we, you know, it's hard because obviously Justin and the boys are great and their show is amazing and it's hilarious and it was kind of scary to do something in their format um, because then there's a direct comparison. But it was, a, it was a lot of fun and I think we felt like we really needed to give people advice. <laughs> Like, we really had to do that. We really had to to do the advice part more than they feel like maybe they need to. We couldn't get past that. Um, but it was a ton of fun. And I, I, liked, I liked having it a little more structured and, like, a problem to solve together. Like, here's a, a query. We have to answer it together. I thought that was fun. Um, Isabel said, so Justin is the brother most likely to vape. I mean, he, he did vape. He did vape, and then when I was pregnant, he was still vaping, and the smell of the vape, I mean, it was fruity, it was just, he was off the nicotine stuff, it was just like weird fruity stuff, and it, I couldn't handle the smell, and that was how he quit, because I just said, I can't, you, you, you have to go somewhere else to do that, and that was the end of it. Uh. Madison asked health problems with eating too fast. Well, Madison, don't be worried. I'd say the main thing with eating too fast is that 
you're not necessarily giving your body time to know that it's full. So eating slower will help your stomach send, send signals to your brain when you're full on time. So you'll stop eating when you're full as opposed to maybe overeating. So it is important to slow down. I told everybody that you vaped. No, oh, yeah. I think they're, I don't think it's a terrible stop smoking aid, aid by the way, because it's a, it's a good, um, it gives you more control to step down nicotine. Mm-hmm. So I think there are worse ways. And also, I think it's safer than smoking. I, I think, though the research isn't cur- Curiosity wanted to know our fave cartoons. Let me say this about that point. Right now, yes, I ha- I absolutely support that it's safer than smoking. We don't have a lot of years of data. I mean, I think that it's going to remain to be seen what, like, my worry is that if you're like a kid and instead of smoking, you start vaping, and so now you're going to vape from when you're whatever, 12, 13 years old for the rest of your life. I have no idea what that's going to do. I think it's probably better if you don't do either. But, you know, if we're comparing one to the other, I'd rather people vape. We love Steven Universe. That's one of our favorite cartoons. Yep. We watch that. Um, we actually, There's it's an hard for us to... the Adventure Zone in, a, in one of the Steven Universe, the one about the little kid that tells the tells fortunes. If you look in the arcade in a couple of the shots in that one, the little robot that tells fortunes. Um, if you look at the arcade in a couple of the shots, there's a one called Zone of Adventure that Steven put in as a Adventure Zone reference because he's a fan of Adventure Zone. That's probably our favorite that we watch. We have to like hold ourselves back. Like don't watch the new episodes until Charlie's with us. <laughs> so we don't watch them without her. Um, that and then I love she watches Elena of Avalor. I've talked about this before. It's an amazing princess show. I was never a Disney princess person, but I can get on board with Elena. Uh, couch with plugs. Yes, the armrest has plugs in it. And yeah. It's... This was Justin's Father's Day gift. Yeah. This couch. Yeah. Um uh, Ergak asks, have you ever had to explain that vaccines don't cause autism? Yes. Yesterday. Yes. That horrible, um, that horrible myth has permeated society so well. I explain that on a regular basis, unfortunately. You should just tell people on a day-to-day basis, like, just in case you're curious. Vaccines don't cause autism. Um, That was all wrong. It was totally wrong. It was all a lie. It was wrong. It was wrong. And I still continue to explain that on a regular basis. My uh, my favorite uh, character on Steven Universe is uh, Onion. Who's yours? That's a really hard question. Yeah, who's your favorite gem? You can narrow it down. I probably I probably connect most with Amethyst. She's the one you uh, mm-hmm. dressed up as for Halloween. Yeah, I probably identify most with her. Do you guys like Tim and Eric? Sammy wants to know. Um, <laughs> I Sydney does not, except for the, the <laughs> except sketch. for the one sketch where <laughs> Justin the, loves it. Justin I, loves it. I like no. Well, I like about fifty fifty. I I, yeah, I think that you they're, seem to love it. Well, the, earlier I it got weirder and less like joke. There were less like fully formed jokes. I think later in the series, and I think that that's cool. And I'm glad they were able to explore that. I didn't necessarily enjoy watching as much. Sydney mm-hmm. only likes the Targus bit where the ATM <laughs> keeps calling the guy Targus. I don't know why. I don't know why, but every time I think about it, it makes me my, laugh. My favorite is Celery Man, obviously. That's a slam dunk. Funny. You like Celery Man, too, uh, right? I do like Celery Man. I do like that you try to do with Charlie the the one where the uke fell on his sights. And the uke fell on his computer and now he can't, can't get his sights. sights. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> he tries to do that one with Charlie and she doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, someone asked uh, tips on um, dieting smarter. Um, one thing that I I was I actually did before I started doing this low carb thing um, is making like small decisions and sticking to them like one hundred percent. Like um, Sydney has talked to me about uh, people like patients she has that drink full calorie soda. It's like, I can't imagine that. Mm. Like, if you just flip, like, if you just turn that one switch and just do that for, like, two weeks and then make another small change like that, like... And I mean, like, regularly. I mean, like, multiple times a day. I don't mean, if you occasionally drink one full-calorie soda, like, that's not the end of the world. But, but like, the idea of drinking 
five or six cans of regular calorie soda a day. Just not, it's not a good healthy choice. My main man, Michael Sullivan's up in the chat room. He wants to know what books are you enjoying right now? Um, I'm currently reading the Red Rising series. Um, Lynn's wife, Vanessa, actually turned me on to it. Um, on social media, she didn't personally. Um, but, uh, it's really good space opera, sort of like parallel, like parallels between our, our reality and some of our situations and, um, about a miner on Mars that tries to overthrow society. It's pretty cool. I don't, I love reading. I don't have as much time to anymore. I'm trying to read Amy Poehler's book, Yes, Please. I'm like, slowly. Mm-hmm. Just not because it's not enjoyable, it is. Amy You're Poehler. reading Bad, Femi- Bad Feminist. I am too, that right? too. I am reading that. I like to have more than one book going at a time. Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. And that's a, that's a good, it's a series of essays, so that's easier. One, I can digest one at a time. And then, I mean, obviously the new Archies, I read those as they come out. Sally asked about tips for a good marriage. Um, Do you have any? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've said this one before, but it's my favorite one, so bears repeating. Uh, and I don't always live by this, but I try to. I think that the the key to a happy marriage is to make it 60-40 with both people assuming that they're doing the 60% and the other person is doing the 40. And I think if you do that, then you'll overlap each other in nice ways rather than expecting it to be 50-50 all the time. I think that's good good advice. I'm going to say something that sounds like we planned this now. What? What's yours? Well, I was going to say that my mom always used to say this to me, and I think it's good advice, only it's slightly different. She used to say a marriage is 80-20 both ways all the time. Yeah. So. So it's different. It's just a math. It's more. It's more. I guess, I guess more is what I'm giving you is more is what I'm saying. Yeah, you're giving me 80, and, and you're I'm only giving, giving me 60, 60 so that makes perfect sense. But, yeah. Anyway. Well, and, and I mean, I think also, like, choose somebody to marry who you genuinely like and have fun with. Yeah, you know, Justin that's... Justin and I were friends first. Yeah, and I think that the the way that I knew Sydney was the right person for me uh, was that when I was around her, I was just, like, a regular version. I was, like, I was around my brothers. Like, me around Sydney is... Me around my brother is the same thing. And if you ever find yourself in a relationship where you're a different person... Mm-hmm with that person than the other people that that you love in your life, I think that you should, like, mm-hmm. bounce I think that's not a good sign. Um, but that's... Chickadee Forever me. asked, what's your favorite episode of Sawbones? Do you have a favorite episode? Uh, Corpse, Corpse Medicine is my favorite. Eating, like eating, mummies. eating Mummies. Eating Mummies. Eating Mummies is way up there. Um... Does it get any better than the Eating Mummies one? It's my favorite. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's probably... Uh, Orgon, Orgon Energy. Dr. Reich's mm. Sex Box is also very high on the list. That's a good one, too. I also like the one with Parrot Fever where we find out the origins of the NIH. Um, I got a question coming in over text from Teresa McElroy who <laughs> says how have the brothers changed since they got married you're the best I mean, you're looking at me like I'm but you're the best to answer that um you've known them longer can I say this uh, oh how Travis and Griffin changed since they've been married yeah who else do you think are the brothers well I thought she meant collectively all three of us to you like question oh. to you collectively how have we changed uh how has Justin changed um, That's hard because we've been married so much longer than we dated. Yeah, we've been married almost 11 years now. I, I mean, I think you've chilled out a lot. I remember you being a lot more intense early on. I think you've chilled out a lot. And I think you're more relaxed. And um, Travis is a lot I, more patient. And, yeah, and he, I can see that even. Travis is the one that, like, mm-hmm. a lot of the times diffuses tense situations. Um and he's the one that takes this takes the step back and says, mm-hmm. "Hey, I'm I we need to calm down about this, or let's take another perspective about this." And before he married Teresa, he would have been the one who was just like charging through. Um, so he's gotten a lot more zen, I think, since he's mm-hmm. been married. Griffin's just happier. He used to be a, a that's what I was gonna say. A little bit of a yeah. eeyore from time to time. Griffin is much much happier. Just generally, he seems very very good. 
Yeah. Good. Um, everybody go to MaximumFun.org for it slash donate. Um, we really appreciate it. And Sawbones, we got Sawbones people, you got to make your, your voices heard. We don't want to get canceled by big, big podcasts. <laughs> Does that happen? Um... Uh, were any of you guys the black sheep growing up? Um, Travis is probably the closest, just because he's the middle one. I think that's pretty common. I think but. that I think that was. I don't want to call Tay the black sheep. I think, although Tay would probably say that about herself. I think she would think that was pretty punk rock and would say that. But I think that. Um, she probably had a little bit of that middle child thing too. Felt like she wasn't the oldest with the responsibility, all the responsibility that comes with that, and all the praise. I think we probably get. Mm -hmm. I got. I felt like I got a lot of that. And then she wasn't the baby, and she felt like more of the black sheep. Uh, someone she was tattooed. Someone asked uh, how we met. Sydney and I, uh, our families did theater together, and then we were in The Wizard of Oz after your family moved back to Huntington. Yeah. I was Lord Growly, and you were Girl from Oz number two, three. Mm -hmm. And then well, later we were doing Charlotte's Web. I would have been 15, and you would have been 13. 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I was the stage manager, and she was my assistant stage manager. And that's when we fell in love and mm -hmm. uh, dated for a couple months. And then I went to church camp and then called Sydney. And that was stupid, and I don't know why I did it. <laughs> and I literally like did not. And he well broke my heart and devastated heart me. Heart it devastated was like three years, years he was at church, church camp, camp or something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it was like, extremely terrible. So she, I asked her at homecoming. She said no, and we broke up for because you're mad at me. I'm not I was blaming mad you. At you. You hurt my feelings. And then we broke up for ten years after that. Uh, I guess all of we high broke, school broke up and... for about a decade. That was about seven years. Uh, seven yeah. years, and then in our, and then in my third year of college, your last year, fifth yeah. year, we got back together. Yeah, at we a saw bar each other. Banana, Banana Joe's. Joe's, Banana Joe's Island Party, um, and I know I've told this story before, but next door to Banana Joe's Island Party was uh, a bar that was parodying that bar, uh, this shitty little bar um, next to it that uh, renamed itself. Uh, Instead of Banana Joe's Island Party, it renamed itself Peninsula uh, uh, Pineapple, Tom. Pineapple Tom's Peninsula, Peninsula Bash, Bash, which is pretty Dustin, pretty choice. Justin came up to me at Banana Joe's and said, "You know, we well, asked me to dance, and then we danced for a while, and then he said, you know, back when we were younger, uh, I, you know, we never got a chance to have that that first kiss." And then we did Mooch. there at Banana Joe's Island Party. That was the last time he was smooth. That was my last smooth thing. That I feel I like do. the end of When Harry Met Sally right now. Really? <laughs> Where I was like the interludes with the little couples telling their stories. I feel like the middle of When Harry Met Sally. I'll have what she's having. That's my celebrity Have fashion. you ever seen When Harry Met Sally? Yeah, that, oh, that well, woman no, does this. I don't, uh, it's not really... <laughs> Uh, Rowan wants to know, what is my astrology sign? I'm an Aries. My mom tells me many things about what that means for me. And <laughs> I don't know, but... I just got an email from... Justin's the... a Scorpio, in case anybody I just got an wonder. email from the Mysterious Package Company, Sid. Mm. Curious and Conundrums is coming. A new one. Y'all in the Mysterious Package Company? Go check that out. Tell them we sent you. It's dope as hell. Um... Sarah asks, I'm single, how do I not lose relationship hope? How do you not lose relationship hope? Um, I, I, that's tough. You know, that's so, that's really hard coming from people who are, who are married. It's like always, yeah. it's kind of shifty coming from us. Like, I know, we always sound like eternally like, oh, it's fine. You, you'll, find, you'll find that special person. But I do believe that though. I know that sounds banal, but I, I mean, I do, I do think that I mean, when, when Justin and I, it's funny, when Justin and I started dating, I actually told him, I don't want this to be like a, I, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm feeling really good about myself right now. And I'm like, I'm wanting to focus on like, you know, really just 
me and like I was headed towards med school and I, I want to think about my career and I'm in a really good place and I really feel good about me and that's when I fell madly in love mm -hmm. and I think like it's okay to focus more on you and your own happiness and whatever you're going to do and I think I think when you do that it's a little easier to be open to uh, I love think, and relationship I think when, hope, you, when you're feeling good hope of any sort you. hope of any sort about anything is a is a renewable resource that, mm -hmm. that you that replenishes over time and that you have to sort of safeguard there's a bible verse in romans i don't remember the exact citation but um it it boils down to we are saved by hope but once we see something it, but hope is defined as things we cannot see for once we can see them they are no longer hope and like that that is the thing i cannot sit here and guarantee you that you will find that special person and that is why it is hope that you have to keep in your heart and you have to safeguard and you have to reinforce for yourself that it, you that it's something that you want to work towards um, and it's something that you want to the best you can do is keep yourself open to it and 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 be hopeful because and and remember that there's no such thing as false hope because if it was a guarantee then it wouldn't be hope so it's really good advice honey Thanks. It's all in the Bible. And you're pulling out a Bible quote. Check it out. This is the difference. Justin was raised Baptist and I was raised Catholic. I can't quote the Bible ever. Um, somebody asked me if I played D&D, &D, what kind of character would I play as? I did. Twice? Twice did we play? Mm, yeah, we played a couple times. A couple times? And I was a barbarian. Named Mossy. Mm -hmm. I actually had fan art of Sydney's uh, character Mossy made because uh, mm -hmm. she's my favorite character in D and D. So mm -hmm. I had her fan art made. I named her for a big swamp monster from an episode of Sophia the First that Charlie really liked. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Someone asked, "How do we ever do any kind of improv or other classes?" Uh, if not, what inspires a lot of your humor? I never had, like, humor classes, um, <laughs> joke classes, but I was an acting directing major in college, so, um, a lot of, a lot of that, uh, stuff was, was useful, mainly for listening, I think is really useful, and developing voices and stuff like that. So, well, how many improv classes did you have for jokes? How many joke classes did you take? Mm, I have a, a major in biology with minors in chemistry and Spanish. And I was one credit away from a minor in history. That's it. Stacy asked, how, did I, how come I didn't swim with the dolphins? That's a great question, Stacey. Um, I thought that I needed to stay out to take pictures. But it turns out that the place they put you to take pictures, you can't really get good pictures because they're about to charge you mm -hmm. uh, twice as much as it costs you to swim with the dolphins to take pictures. Um, so I would have just swum with the dolphins if I'd known. There you go. That, that's the answer. Anthony wants to know, is pineapple on pizza okay? I say yes. Absolutely. I love pineapple I, on pizza. It's not pizza at that point. Some sort of disgusting pineapple bacon savory and flatbread. chicken and peppers and onions. I, Justin calls my pizza a monstrosity. Nothing, nothing doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sydney, habla espanol? Un poquito. Un poquito. Both mm -hmm. of us. Um, ambos. <laughs> ambos un poquito espanol. We were actually, you know what's funny? Is we lived in um, Honduras for a month. In, or I, I lived in Honduras for, in Roatan for a month. You lived in Honduras. I went back three different times. Yeah, a few different times. Yeah. And it's funny when you're, when you're there, um, you start to become sort of fluent in Spanish because you like it, like your brain just like sort of I've taken like a lot of Spanish classes but I don't have an opportunity to use it every day um so it's like you don't I but when you're in a in an area that uses it it's like it's weird how you start to like congeal something approaching like yeah. functional fluency yeah but then as soon as you leave it's, it's really hard to maintain if you're not using it on a regular basis mm -hmm. We had a little girl on the island that would come by and te who we would just like qu quiz, rap. We would let her watch our TV and uh -huh. we would quiz her in exchange rapid fire on like words. We showed her Star Wars. She taught us Spanish. Yeah. How do I get myself to eat vegetables when I vomit? It's just the smell of them. 
Um, you can always, here's the thing, you can always yeah. roast. Roasting will transform most vegetables, like roasting with garlic and olive oil and salt and pepper transforms uh, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower into something that is like actually genuinely tasty. What do you mean even raw vegetables though? Because I don't think raw vegetables have a particularly pungent smell. Yeah, but I can't eat, I don't eat raw broccoli, I don't, I don't fucks with raw cauliflower, I think it's disgusting. I love raw vegetables. Like, I, that, you're, you me, you're a you freak. You give me a big tray of raw vegetables and some hummus and I am good. Um, that they they don't smell that much like that, and they taste great, crunchy too, crunchy. Yeah, you you put a little curry powder, salt and pepper, olive oil on your cauliflower. It's just about finding ways of cooking that is good. You know, her mom just got a we got her a spiralizer, mm -hmm. and she made some uh, some zoodles, some some uh, zucchini noodles. Those went down pretty good too. Got me honest, pretty good. Thank you, Maureen, for your nice things about still buffering. Yeah. Go, everybody go donate to still buffering, maximumfund.org forward slash donate, and all the great shows in the Maximum Fund Network. We appreciate you. Cauliflower is just crunchy bits and water. I mean, yeah, no, that's everything well, on earth, though. <laughs> that's all we are, crunchy bits and water. Just crunchy bits and water. <laughs> Hey, uh, Wendigo Queen says, I love zucchini noodles. Let's not go fucking crazy, okay? They're still made of zucchini. There's no reason to love them, but they are edible with marinara sauce in, 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 uh, small amounts. Paul asked me if I have any patients who listen to my podcast, our podcast, and then my podcast. Uh, not very often. Um, we don't have a huge... I would say we don't have a huge hometown audience. It's weird, yeah, but, but it's been better since the TV show came out. I think we've had more people listen to all the shows, but I have a lot of people, a lot more people who ask me about Justin's podcast than about mine. Uh, occasionally, I do, and it's usually like brought up at the very end of the visit, like as somebody's leaving. Like, by the way, I like the podcast, and I never know what to say because then I think, what all have I said? <laughs> you know, because we've had a really important, serious conversation. And, um, but not very often. My students and my residents are a lot more likely to listen to the podcast. Sunny, um, Sunny asked uh, favorite places to places we'd love to go or favorite places to go, like to go back to, travel wise. Oh, travel wise. Um, let's see. Of the places, I mean, of the places we've been together. It's whatever. So, um, I have told Justin for a while, I really think he would enjoy, uh, when I was in college, I did like a backpacking tour. Sounds very cliche. I did a backpacking tour of Europe. Some parts, not all, just some parts, before I studied at Oxford in the summer. I have been meaning to discover my sexual identity, so it seems like that would be a good way of doing that. <laughs> I know it sounds like a very cliche thing that I did, but I think... Uh, I, Justin and I have went on our honeymoon to London and to Cork and to Dublin. Yes. And those are beautiful. I knew that you would enjoy those places. I also would really like to take you to, um, Munich in Germany. I think you would yeah, love that. Yeah, I dig that. That's high sure. on my list. And the other place is, um, Florence, Italy, of course. I yeah. think you would... That's, that's how I tend to think of a lot of places, like, where do, have I been that I really want to take Justin to? And those are those two places are high on my list, places I've been. The, um, I did medical work in Malawi, um, in Equindeni, and I would love to go back there someday. I, I think the best place I've ever been is Bath in the UK. It was, like, a really, that's, like, a magical area. Um, like, I felt like it was a very different pace of life, and it was a very different life, and I really, mm -hmm. really liked Bath a lot. Um places that I would like to go you know I always said I wouldn't go I wouldn't enjoy Tokyo and Japan just because the culture shock would be so different but uh weirdly and I know this is lame but after watching Terrace House I kind of want to go to Japan I think mm -hmm. it would be like pretty mm -hmm. pretty fun it's just harder with a kid anytime your flights like when I start thinking about how long that flight would be it's like I don't know maybe with some Benadryl <laughs> We don't do that. Don't tell the authorities. Don't, no, don't say that. That's not something we do. We don't do that. Our parents probably did. Someone said, do you really believe celiac disease isn't real? Um, no. I think celiac disease is real. I think a lot of people are pretending I, to have gluten 
intolerance, um, but I don't think celiac disease. Yeah, I think I think gluten issues are overdiagnosed, and and there are there there are people who probably are okay who think they have gluten intolerance who have been told that no, we both we both know that celiac disease is a real condition. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've known people who actually have it. Understanding there. Yeah. 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 There absolutely there are people who can't eat gluten. Absolutely. Um, I joked about celiac not being real in a bonus podcast, but I was drunk. I mean, okay, well, oh, sorry. No, he just a joke. he doesn't think that. No, just no. a joke. Um, no. uh, R.S. Lake uh, asked how my wife can stay sane and socially connected while in med school. Um, I think somewhat Justin had said a little bit ago about like making sure that you do take breaks occasionally um, from studying. Like I would have. Well, he well he's in med school. Oh. How his wife can stay sane while he's in med school. Well, how did you stay sane while I was in med school? Who says I did? That's all you got. Um. I, you know what, honestly, and Sydney can back me up on this, I'm I'm someone who does not, I do okay by my, like, I'm a, I'm a fairly... Justin likes a lot of alone time. Yeah. I don't. If it were the, now let me say if it were the other way around, it'd be hard for me. Yeah. I don't, I like to be around people. It I'm worked. an extrovert. I get my energy from social interaction. Yeah, but as an introvert, I really, I, it, it was, I miss Sydney, and I, it was hard on me to, like, see you going through something really difficult like that, but, like, you're... It's also like you're built for it, and you're so freaking smart. Um, the hardest part Thank was you. doing your practice tests with you and reading questions that I could barely say, let alone understand. Um, I also got a lot of practice exams, um, and uh, that was fun. I will say that. That's maybe like a good little tip on the side. As a medical student, you have to learn the physical exam, and like they teach it to you in class, but then having the ability to practice it at home is really helpful. And I remember one of my professors once saying, like, if you can hold your cat down, you could practice it on your cat. And thinking, like, I'm not going to put my poor cat through that, but I will ask my husband if I can <laughs> examine him. And Justin actually really enjoyed it. I so, love it, man. ASMR for days. So I would practice, and I would give him, like, the list of things I had to do. So, like, make sure I do this whole list of things without looking at it while I examine you. And it was a good way to, you know, study, but also we spent time together. And you super liked it. Yeah. And Sydney also used to go through, I remember when you were in med school, you used to go through your uh, notes before a test as a sleep aid for me. Mm-hmm. You would just like regurgitate the things that you needed because you needed to say them out loud. It, yeah. And that would help me to fall asleep because it was so boring. <laughs> it's not boring. It's just so boring. There are parts of it that are probably boring. That's fair. To normal people. Um, Sydney, do you like Travis or Griffin better? Do you think I'm ever gonna pick? No way. No way. They're both they're both beautiful, unique flowers in their own way. <laughs> Coles, coleslaw. I love them both. Somebody asked about coleslaw. That's the coleslaw is the worst. I like oh. coleslaw fine. Oh. I don't like it if it's too sloppy. It's hey, like Justin, too runny. You, I like it when it's a little drier. But Justin, like do you want some cabbage? No, I'd really rather not. What if I blast it with mayonnaise? That's still a no. Justin Get out of here. Mayonnaise. Ugh. Ugh. Top five. Bad things. Here's the weird thing about it, though. If there's a real thin layer, like a real thin layer, I can get into mayonnaise conceptually. The problem is if you have mayonnaise put on by people who are making a sandwich for you, they're always like, oh, he likes mayonnaise, huh? Mm-hmm. Slather it on. Well, exactly. that noise. Exactly. I, nobody puts small amounts of mayonnaise on anything. Miracle Whip. Now I don't like mayonnaise after you describe it that way. You shouldn't. Like an undercover brother. <laughs> um, cabbage is just big grass. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Not even aioli. I can get down with aioli. That's different. Because they mix it with things. Obs. Sydney, you're great at presentations. Uh, Mr. Coots 2000 says, tips for presentations in front of a class. Um, 
Okay, I really like giving presentations. It helps. That helps. I have a, I have a tip that's probably not very helpful, which is really enjoy it. Um, I I read. I have like the stuff I'm gonna say to the class, and then I read a ton that I don't like. Write down or turn it into a presentation. I'll just sit and read a lot of stuff without the pressure of having to like I'm gonna turn this into stuff to put on a slide, because I find that if I just read a bunch. When I go to give the presentation, I have this like fund of knowledge about the topic in my head that far exceeds what's on the slides or whatever that you're showing people. And that makes you feel really comfortable in the topic. And you can not just say what's on the slide. You can talk about, you know, the stuff around it. And that, that always makes for a better presentation. Um, make eye contact with people or like do that thing where you look right above. If you can't do that, I'll like make eye contact around the room with people as I'm going. And that helps move around move your hands. If you can vary the presentation a bit so that there's question and answer interactive stuff, people really like that. Um, don't rush it. You're going to talk faster than you normally do. That's a given. So consciously make an effort to tell yourself to slow down every so often because you're not going to talk too slowly. You're going to talk too fast. Um, I also had a professor who told me that if you do a PowerPoint, <laughs> use um, white text on a blue slide, it's the best. And use Arial, not Times New Roman. I have no idea if that matters, but I had a professor who was very particular about that. Um, somebody asked about Brussels sprouts. And I'm just going to say, I'm deeply into Brussels sprouts. If, especially if you shred those bad boys up. Rachel and Griffin, we do British Christmas every year. So we like, all, we cook, for Christmas we cook like a bunch of British dishes. We'll do like um, Yorkshire pudding and do Mary Berry's recipe for mm -hmm. a roast turkey and um, a Christmas a pudding. Bread, a Christmas pudding and bread sauce. It sits in our closet for a month. Yeah, or, or six weeks sometimes. Some bread mm -hmm. sauce and, and, and other things like this, some Stilton over uh, uh, and, and mashed potatoes, what have you. But um, Griffin and Rachel, uh, two Christmases ago, made Brussels sprouts and roasted mm -hmm. them. Roast them with garlic and salt and pepper. Changed my world. Changed my whole life. So, that's my answer about that. We should probably wrap up. Don't you think? I'm running low on my drink. I know. Several people asked how you met Lynn. How I met Lynn. He, he started listening to the podcast because he heard... He started listening to my brother, my brother and me because he heard an ad on Judge John Hodgman. And uh, he tweeted about the show. And, of course, we, we tweeted back at him. And we just started tweeting that way. And then we are in New York a lot for business stuff. So one time when I was there, I just said, hey, let's go hang. And then we hang, hung. Um, it was while he was writing Hamilton. Um, and uh, that's it. That's the whole story. That's the whole story. I need another drink, Sid. So I need to stop here or could be another drink. Um, either way. Let me say this, Rachel. I don't think, I don't know that all Americans eat British Christmas dinners. We just like them. We got really into British Bake Off um, before Christmas 2015. We were super into it, and we were like, let's just make... Let's do that. Let's do that, because we started baking a lot of British desserts around the we November. We got Mary Berry's book, and yeah. it just went, went crazy. Yeah. Um, Justin's a really good baker. I don't know if we you. talk about that a lot. Not enough, sir. Not enough. Justin's a super good baker. I mean, you're a good cook, but particularly baking. Justin likes, like, very strict rules. He likes baking because it's a science mm -hmm. and it's very particular and he the likes that. Yeah, the repeatability of it is, is good for me. Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's very into baking. Yeah. He's good at it. That's why I'm, yeah. It's, it's good. I like it. I'm not. No. Sydney's good. Sydney's got a good palate, but she doesn't like to do things the right way. Sometimes she likes to do them the wrong way that she makes up. That's hard for cooking. I don't follow instructions well. Yeah. I don't follow directions well. No. Yeah. I have issues um, with authority. <laughs> like a cookbook. Uh, Chris, I don't like cookbooks telling me what to do. Yes. We, of course, we get Crimbo crackers. We've got boxes upon boxes of them. Um, we've got, I love the ones with the little whistles where you can do a little orchestra. I mm -hmm. love that. Um, we definitely, definitely do, do crackers. We got those whiskey ones last year. Got whiskey crackers one year. That was yeah, a good idea. Yeah, the whiskey in them. Fancy um, whiskey. I don't really like whiskey, but it was cool. Yeah. All right, should I turn this off or should I get another drink? She still has some of your drink left. What do you mm -hmm. want to do? Okay, Sydney's so going to entertain you. I guess what I can do. Okay. Did you 
Just and Silly Blueberry Muffin Tops. Not since the slow carb, no cereal, which is very sad. And I can't remember the last time we had those, actually. So, no. Margaret asked me the most accurate medical TV show. Um, I think the one, I've said this before, I think, the, the one that is most, like, resident life like most reminds me of being a resident of scrubs they get a lot of things right about just like going through training and what that process is like and i mean the medical stuff is pretty okay i mean it, it, they're like most medical shows we're like yeah that's generally true there's some weird things here and there um so i guess that's the most accurate because i mean i really enjoyed house when it was on but there was some crazy stuff happening on there like why certain doctors would do certain procedures and would be trained in different ways I never understood and um I just could never get into Grey's Anatomy very much because it was I know that's terrible Riley would kill me for saying that but it was so much more about the relationships than about the medicine and I like the medicine I'll take MASH MASH is my favorite always and I don't know how realistic because I've never been an army surgeon certainly but it's awesome uh, Cat's Paw asks, how can I fight jet lag halfway across the world? Um, it, jet lag is rough because you're really just trying to reset your circadian rhythms. Melatonin can help with that, like the supplement over-the-counter melatonin. It's not always good for sleep. Like some people just kind of use it like as a blanket, like, well, you got to go to sleep, take melatonin. But for resetting your circadian rhythms, it's a little more helpful for that. And then just like forcing yourself back into that schedule and sleeping on it also helps. So like when we come home from a trip, we'll make ourselves stay on schedule even if we want to nap you got to get that circadian rhythm reset uh what do i generally teach s o m g it's cheese <laughs> uh i i'm a an assistant professor in the family medicine department and so i teach all topics i mean i, I all kinds of different things family medicine is is broad so I do everything from like lectures on cholesterol guidelines to I also have like a specialty in tropical medicine and global health so I do global health and travel lectures um just whatever I, I kind of teach and then and then my whole like you know I do a lot of on the job teaching I have a lot of students who work with me and so I'm constantly teaching them about everything that family medicine encompasses so um and then a lot of didactics on like the physical exam and that kind of stuff Basic, basic medical stuff. Um, uh, Sydney, did you take a gap year before med school? Um, you know what? I didn't. I went straight. I've, I've gone straight through all the way. And uh, I don't think it would have been a bad idea. I mean, I was fine. I don't, like, I don't regret any of the choices I've made. I don't think it messed me up to go straight from college to med school, but um, I will say this, if there is some like grand trip you've always wanted to do or experience you've always wanted to have, um, I wouldn't say like, well, I'll wait until after med school because it, it, you just get on that roller coaster and it's like med school and then residency and maybe you want to do a fellowship and then you're trying to get a job and when you first start somewhere, it's not easy to get a lot of vacation time. So I'd say if there's like some big thing you've wanted to do, go ahead and do it before med school because that's really not going to you know, as someone who used to be on a med school admission committee, it's not going to keep you from getting in. If your grades and scores are good and you have good interview and you have a reason you want to be a doctor that, you know, that makes sense and all that, saying, but I took a year to go do this incredible experience or work or learn these extra things or whatever is never going to hold you back from getting in or, you know, slow you down. That extra year, you're not going to, I don't think you'd regret it. Somebody asked how you deal with patients that are, uh, you suspect being hypochondriacs. Which I would expand to, like, not just hypochondriacs, but, like, fake diseases. Like, they've convinced themselves of things that you don't think, you don't uh, necessarily agree with. You mean, you mean like, you're, we're not talking about malingering. People who are trying to get stuff, like, who are, will, no, like, people intentionally. Who people who, who really believe it. I think that's hard because you never want to dismiss, I never want to dismiss somebody offhand, and especially if it's our first visit. I mean, I need to know, first of all, are there concerns legitimate about whatever they're concerned about and so I mean I think that being very thorough and listening is the biggest thing to make sure that a patient knows they're being heard and that I am concerned and I am considering you know whatever whatever ailment they think might be happening that I am actually considering it and 
we walk through the process together. I mean, a lot of it is, I feel like I'm your partner if you're my patient and we're gonna work on this together. And so if there's some symptoms and there's not a clear diagnosis, let's solve this puzzle together and let's get to a conclusion that we both feel satisfied by. Hopefully we can get there through history and physical, but if that also requires like a blood test or an x-ray or something, we can do that too. But let's get to something together. And I just, I just kind of start from the perspective of let's, let's figure this out and not, even if I know from the beginning, like, I think this is very unlikely that this is a diagnosis, just not cut people off. I think people want to be heard. People, mm -hmm. especially people who are scared, they want to, they want to be heard. Mm -hmm. Um... What's our most common argument slash disagreement in our marriage? That you leave all the cabinet doors open? It's not only an argument. I agree that's a problem. Justin leaves all the cabinet doors open all the time in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, Sydney can't be bothered to put the dishes in the dishwasher correctly, even though I have a system and correctly. it's fine and it's a good system. Um no, like, what's the overriding? I mean, like I it, don't. I there are a lot of times where I expect Justin to know how I'm feeling, based on nonverbal signals that I'm sending him. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of times where he feels like I don't communicate well enough my wants and needs. Yeah. And that I shouldn't just expect him to pick up on these nonverbal cues. I'd say that's the root of any arguments that we have. Um. I think for, for my part, I I don't um, I don't communicate well how I feel a lot of times, um, and I don't because I don't know how I feel a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Like in my house, we grew up, and it was very common to feel like you need to get back to being happy as quickly as possible, so you didn't like deal with things in a very serious way so like i don't deal with that i'm a template a very like let's move on to mm -hmm. the like so let's get back to happy right away as quickly yeah. as possible and i think that's a big thing for sydney and i because we don't i think sometimes especially earlier on it led to us not like dealing with actual problems getting the root of stuff we're getting better yeah it's only taken 11 years we'll find it. we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll get there but the dish thing is really unforgivable the cabinets, every cabinet, every cabinet, every cabinet. The, the I'll walk in the kitchen sometimes, and I mean, imagine that all your cabinets are just the standing best one open. we ever had, though, was it's like a poltergeist. One of us left the toilet paper roll on <laughs> the counter and didn't throw it away, and it was like it drove me so crazy that she did that that I was just like, okay, to complete this game. And when I emptied the next toilet paper roll, I put it next to it, and then she. Eventually, long story short, we had like nine of them, just like pyramided up, and it was just this game I of mean, chicken of like pyramid. one of us has to throw this away, we have to, we have to give it up. He'll always cave first because I'm a lot more comfortable with mess. Um. Let's see. <laughs> uh. We, we just reading people are ready. People are funny. Um, uh. Justin, can you elaborate on not keeping pizza in the <laughs> oven? I know it's bad, but I still don't know why. Okay, Dr. Puppy. <laughs> There's this thing called the danger zone. It's easy to remember because it's between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. What's that translate to in Celsius? I have no idea. This is America. 40 to 140. Mm -hmm. Four hours, keep the nine, the number four, four hours in that danger zone, 40 to 140, four hours in there, food is unsafe to eat. Your oven, unless activated in the ovening, is is between 40 and 140 degrees. Four hours in there, bacteria is going to ferment, it's going to develop, take it from me again. I do have a food handler's license bequeathed to me by the Capital County Health Department. Hasn't it expired by now? Well, Sydney, I think the danger zone still exists, and I think those best now. practices are still in place. So, it's the danger zone. Keep your keep your pizza out of the oven. Put it in the fridge like you're growing up. And then when you reheat it, <laughs> when you reheat it, listen. And Sydney's going to back me up on this, because uh -huh. she actually is on board with this one. Especially yeah, if you get thin fair. crust, cut the crust off, fold it in half into a little diamond, put it in the waffle maker, pizza Lazarus. Pizza's back. 
in full force. It's but, actually really good. But, I mean, I like cold pizza too, to be fair. That's that repellent. But if you fold the pizza and then you put it in the waffle maker, the cheese squishes out and heats up and like crisps up. And then, especially if you give it a little olive oil, the the crust crisps up on the outside, a little salt and pepper. That's how you reheat Don't pizza. Don't torture yourself. I know. I actually am actually am doing that. This is like a all. corollary to this. Seth asked us, what's the oldest food we've ever eaten? Um, which reminds me of Old Burger. Oh, Old Burger. Oh, don't say, oh, don't, don't talk about Old Burger. I shouldn't talk about Old Burger? No. I didn't eat it. <sighs> yeah, I guess talk about Old Burger. It's fine. They should know the truth. Uh, I will eat old food. I have a really high threshold, like, I'm... I, I think it's just because of my background in science. I'm just very realistic. <laughs> no. Uh, Justin and no, I... No, you're nasty. Justin mm. and I drove up to Cincinnati. That's where we were going to see Travis in... Do you remember what he was in? Yes, it was... Um, a bridge works with William Shakespeare. Okay. And it was the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company. And I was very hungover when we were driving there and we stopped and got McDonald's and I got a burger but I was too sick to eat it and so I left it in the car in the parking garage and we went and saw the show and by the time I came out of the show magic of, of time with hangovers I was way better I was I felt great and I was starving and there was this burger sitting in the car and Justin wouldn't let me eat it because he said it was old burger and he made me throw it away for literally six months after that Sydney would ask me, like, what do you think happened to Old Burger? Boy, <laughs> wouldn't Old Burger go down good right now? And I would say, I'm hungry. And she said, don't you wish you had Old Burger to eat? Because, like, from that point on, it was weird. It became this sort of, like, subtraction <laughs> algebra where it's like, if you're hungry, well, there's Old Burger. No way. You don't have Old Burger. Like, you're always negative one burger because of Old Burger's existence and the fact that it was not consumed. It made me really. It became this this mythical thing that was how probably good, how good probably the best burger that I never ate. It exists. It's old burger, if and I'll, I'll never a, know for if sure. Memory serves it was a Big Mac, so it's probably still fine. I got that from my my dad. Told me once when I was in college that the perfect hangover cure was a Big Mac and fries and a fountain Coke from McDonald's, and I like clung to that all through college. Like when my dad gave me this advice, that must be true. Um, that's where that came from. Yeah, that's the story of old. That's the, <laughs> the, 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 the tale of the old tale burger. Of old burger. <laughs> um, what else we got going on? What else is kicking? <laughs> a lot of people talking about old burger. Mm, that's it's, good. Uh, old burger is so hot right now. Yeah, old burger is a big deal. This is really fun, you guys. I hope mm-hmm. you are having a good time. Well, in the interim, maybe head over to maximumfun.org forward slash donate why are you laughing that's the whole reason we want to do this no i like that segue i like that uh maximumfund.org forward slash donate and uh you can give us some money (laughs) please please not just us but anybody um Mm. someone asked about live shows um i think we're going to be in philadelphia at some point soon can't talk about it yet. Can't say when, but I think we're gonna be in Philadelphia soon. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. For Sawbones. Yeah. We'll be in Philadelphia, not the other shows, but Sawbones. No, I. I mean, in general, we will do more live shows. Yes. Yes, we are going to do more. Yes. We're 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 working out the details. Um. Drinks of choice. Uh, I like a horse's neck. It was the official drink of the British Navy replacing pink gin, which was gin and bitters. And a horse's neck is uh, ginger beer, brandy, and bitters. Um, it's a pretty simple drink, but it's a, it's a pretty refreshing one. It's my standard. Brandy, ginger ale, bitters um, is sort of my, or ginger beer and, and bitters is sort of my classic. I do tend to, tend to supplement uh, or supplant that with ginger ale. Because you cannot find diet ginger beer around here. I'm not going to drink calories, so. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I used to mix in Chambers, which is a raspberry liqueur, and call that horse's redneck. And that just made it super sweet. But, again, slow carb. So, not on that train anymore. Just a standard horse's neck. Uh, I drink beer. Sydney, drink, Sydney drinks beer. It's only good beer. Yeah. 
Sydney Sydney is an IPA person, by and large. Currently, I'm saying, yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I've become one. I didn't used to be, but I really have a taste for bitter now. I like bitter and fresh and crisp, and I'm into IPAs at the moment. But I'd say Belgian beers are like my, that's like my safe place. Like a double or a triple, that's, you can always give me one of those and I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Um... Kale's Try gross. Try and ask what's on kale. kale. I like kale. I like it when it's crispy. We had that crispy kale. Crispy I remember it was kale. really good. Did you like that? Uh-huh. I haven't made it. You haven't made it for a few years. Did you really like it? Yeah. Or was it just good for kale? For okay, kale. Okay, well, it was, it was good for kale. It was good for it kale. It was good. It was good. It was, it was good for it was kale. Fine. Yeah, it was good. For kale. I don't have a problem with kale. Or again, roasting. It makes everything better. You know what I roasted today? Lentils. I cooked the lentils. Um, and then I roasted them with some garlic and olive oil and sea salt and some uh, paprika and mm-hmm. red pepper and a and a coconut oil. Makes them crispy. It's great. It's like a snack. I made also a, a ton of protein, ton of iron. Oh. I made a salad with water chestnuts, which Justin hates. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Yeah. Fashion advice. Fashion advice. Yeah, you've <laughs> like, come to the right place. <laughs> I don't think either of us particularly. Value fashion. I mean, in ourselves, like it's fine for other people. I'm Margaret, glad that people value it. Margaret, I used to love Project Runway. First time we got, I got drunk. Uh, I dra- I was 21, and I was at a theater conference, AC, ACTC. Does that sound right? Yeah, something like that. And uh, um, it's a theater conference, and I got drunk on a drink of. Vodka and Mountain Dew Red Bull, and I got super duper drunk. Ended the night on a balcony in an atrium, like within the hotel. My friend Don DeGiulio stole, took the bottle back from me, and I looked him in the eyes and said, "Thank you." I went to bed and blacked out after puking my brains out. Woke up the next day, felt fantastic. He really, fantastic. He really was twenty one. Was twenty one. We're questioning that. No, he really was. Justin didn't start drinking until he's twenty one. Um, I, I uh, my hangover situation was not. I've never had a bad ha- like mm-hmm. I've never had real bad hangovers. It's never. I used to. Back when in the Dwight day. would make us drink Jim J. Bullocks, <laughs> those were the worst hangovers I ever got. Um, we used to dance around the apartment. To yeah. Polyphonic spray. Polyphonic spray. Jim and drink Jim J. Bullocks. That was college. Yeah. Um, I, I drank the first time when I was seventeen. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like drink a lot in high school. It wasn't like my thing, but I did occasionally drink and, um, I drank, I said, this sounds very, again, cliched. I drank green apple pucker and two dogs, which were an Australian lemonade beer that used to be popular back in like the Zima days. And, um, we went to a drag show. I, I, I fixed everybody's IDs. We were 17, but I made everybody's IDs look like we were 18. I used whiteout and colored pencils. That worked? It totally worked. Totally. Because it was the old West Virginia driver's license that had the hill. Like, Remember it had like that right mountainscape on, right behind yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I whiteout and colored pencils. We all made ourselves 18 so we could go to a, so we could go to a drag show. And we had a great time at a drag show. And nobody drove drunk or anything. We were dropped off by sober people and picked up by sober people, and then we all passed out on the floor together. It's mm-hmm. true. And I had a ter- now I had a terrible hangover the next morning, and I was in a show at the time, and my mom made us all get up and go clean the theater before rehearsal. And so we were all like, mop- I remember mopping the stage with sunglasses on and the smell of the cleaner, and I didn't drink for a long time after that. Uh, what do you think of the local, well-rated, uh, local WV IPAs like Devil Ants, Mothman, or Seneca? You love Mothman. I love Mothman. I like Devil Ants, too. Let me say that. Uh, I don't know if I've had Seneca. But I love I Mothman. So. Yeah. I will drink Mothman's Mothman anytime. Mothman's a black anytime. IPA you love, yeah. And it brought me back to beer in a can. I was very much a, a snob who believed that beer had to be in bottles until, I think Mothman was the first, like, why is this in a can? I'll give it a shot. It was delicious. I like it. I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. You were going to tell everybody about when you started smoking. Oh, I started smoking for... Use the opportunity to run back in. Oh, sure, yeah. I started smoking because I was in... I was playing a character called Martini. 
in, um, I think it's the character Danny DeVito played in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And uh, we most of us smoked in the show, and we had it in our head that we needed to look, like, realistic when we were smoking on stage. So we had to smoke in, in our day-to-day lives to learn how to smoke. And the fun thing I learned about that is that your body does not actually know the difference between fun, fake theater smoking and real deal smoking. Uh, so uh, that is how I started smoking. Uh, and that lasted for like two years. It was not a long thing. It was a college thing. Like torn jeans or law school for you. Um, that was a line from Jerry Maguire. In case you guys are J-heads. Um, uh, have I bought anything from Sheets lately? Yesterday I bought a salad at Sheets because on the slow carb diet you can get pretty buck wild with stuff and if you're ordering it from a machine it can't judge you. So you can get a salad with buffalo sauce, eggs, beans, double chicken, uh, and onions and peppers and what have you, and nobody can get on your butt about it. How did I kick the habit? Um, we already answered this, but Alan Carr's Stop Smoking Solution or something like that, but it's Alan Carr is the cat's name. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, I also got really sick. I got, like, the flu or something. When you get a cold or the flu, that's a great time to stop smoking because you're you, it's the last thing you want to do. So it's, like, a natural advantage that you should take advantage of. Can I buy a surprise burger for makeup for, to make up for old burgers, Seth asked. No burger will make up for old burger. Uh, tattoo backstory. Um, this, this tattoo I got when Mom passed away. And me and Travis and Dad and Griffin all got them different parts of the Triforce um, in different places of our body. This tattoo is an old They Might Be Giants logo. I, there's really not a good way to turn that towards you. It's a, it's a they might be giants logo they used to use on tour. Sydney, where's your tattoo? There. There. Let's That's see. pretty self-explanatory. Caduceus. It's the Caduceus. It's not the rod of Asclepius. I know that that's the appropriate. It's not appropriate. Anybody. Symbols mean whatever we say. I know, and everybody recognizes Caduceus as a medical symbol. And there's symbols and symbols mean what we say they mean. So. And I'm due for another one now. Yeah, apparently. We we well surpassed our goal, so I guess Taylor and Riley and I are going to be getting a still buffering tattoo. Probably like the little buff, the buffering thing. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines Taylor's going to design. My, Clayton asked me what my alma mater is. Marshall. Marshall. Well, we both went to Marshall University and I went to Marshall Medical School. Mm-hmm. And Huntington High School, which I could sing the alma mater for. But... See, there's a question here for Je from Justin who asks, are we ever going to watch Survivor? Because I keep <laughs> wanting to start it, and you never want to start it, the new season. You just asked that. Mm -hmm, it's from Justin. A guy named Justin just No, asked. we are going to watch it. You never want to. We've been, it's been so busy, and everything's been very stressful. And then I really like the idea of listening to a podcast instead. And so instead, Justin was like, why don't we listen to this new podcast, S-Town, that's like really good and we got two episodes in and it bummed us both out took us straight to bummer town that's what we're doing and so let's see this town is this yeah um i have just been really busy <clears throat> sometimes i like to unwind with some america's test kitchen oh yeah that's uh america's test kitchen is um that is a show that they had on the boat uh, that we were the on Joko the cruise, cruise. On the Joko cruise. They had a station that played 24 hours a day, America's Test Kitchen. And uh, we watched a lot of it. Um, it's so good. It's on YouTube. Um, just Google it and you can watch it. It's great. It's people making things, but they've proven the recipes with science. Mm -hmm. um, so. I love everything about the show. So good. They got a new host, though. Yeah, I love when the challenge. Chris Kimball got replaced this year, which is fine, but I, 
But they challenge Chris. Jack challenges Chris, right, with tasting. Yeah. Which is the best of these. Oh, man, Chris always gets it. I love yeah. those. Hey, people who finished S-Town, I'm going to turn the tables. Does it ever stop being, like, a huge bummer? Because the end of s- episode two was such an omega bummer that, like, I don't know how I recovered, honestly. Um, and I don't want to get, like, deeper into that if it's just going to be... And I'm sorry... They can say that they didn't sell it as, like, a mystery or whatever, a murder mystery. They definitely did sell it as, like, a murder mystery, treasure hunt, blah, blah, blah. Not, like, a mega bummer, which Mm -hmm. is how I would classify it. It becomes more touching. I mean, I was already very touched. That's how it bummed me in the first place, honestly. Um, Yeah. A lot of people said that. It's got a beautiful ending, so it's worth hanging in there. It is hard. Somebody said they identified a lot with the characters like John, like the South. There's a lot about those people that I identify with, like with the, maybe not necessarily myself, but like with the people I grew up with and our community. I know we're not the South, but I think you see some of that like, kind of like, I can't say that bad word, F it, Mm -hmm. attitude. I know this isn't sawbones, but I'm going to treat it like it is. Yeah, I've cursed many times already. Um, somebody asked, while you're reading all the responses, <laughs> somebody asked, how do you choose a medical specialty? Missing Richard Simmons was dope, by the way. If you haven't listened to Missing Richard Simmons, yeah, go listen to that right now. I haven't gotten to listen to it yet, but you can listen to the whole thing in three hours, because there's only six episodes, and it's like, fantastic. I'm going to talk about choosing a medical specialty. Okay, well, I'll stare in the, the I, space. I'd say keep an open mind and when you experience all the different rotations and the thing that, like, when you see people doing something and you think, I want to be like those people, that's the kind of life I want to have, that's the way I think about things, this is the kind of place I fit in, that's probably the specialty for you. Um, if you're like me, if you like everything... And you don't ever want to be bored. Family medicine is the way to go because it's always new and different. Um, but that was really it for me. I when I got to family medicine, it after being there for a while, I thought, ah, these these people think like I do. You and you'll find that you'll find people in the specialty that you belong in. You'll you'll meet them and you'll go, oh, you look at the world like I do. I admire you and where you are in life, and I want to be where you are in life someday. And then it clicked. Um, someone asked me why we won't talk about the time belt. Um, I was in the time belt when I was like 10 years old. If you Google it, you can watch it. It's an hour-long special about West Virginia history where I star as Justin Evans, a teen who's sent back in time by his uncle Walt and his invention, the time belt, accidentally, and he goes to West Virginia history. It's very educational. It was written and directed by Chuck Minsker for WWK-TV, and you can watch it on YouTube, and it's great. It's great. Just saw Chuck's son, Justin Minsker, and his wife, Crystal, and their lovely daughter, Willa, when we were in Austin. Mm-hmm. Um, I was Justin Evans. The character Justin Evans was named after Justin and Evan. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I didn't know. But it was named after them. But anyway, that's the whole story with Time Belt. Mm-hmm. May I ask? Bane asked how many hours a week I spend researching for Sawbones. It depends on the episode. It really does. I mean, some of the ones, like, um, I think of things like headaches or warts or those kinds of things are a lot easier. They're a lot quicker because if you want to look at just, like, what are weird what are weird things we used to smear on us or drink to cure things, like, you, those, that's really easy to do research on. Um, biographies are a little faster, too. Um, but then some were like, it's not a clear, the angle on it isn't clear yet. I just have to keep reading and reading and reading until I find, like, I'll tell Justin I found the end. I found the end of the story. And it's like the hook. It's the thing that I want to tell you. And you, you usually know what it is because it's the thing that people talk about afterwards or like that we'll spend the most time on. But like, there's the thing that is in the episode that that's what I really want to tell you about because I think it's the coolest or the funniest or the craziest or whatever um sometimes it takes me a while to find that in to the episode so i mean it could be anywhere from i'd say the least i spend would be three hours that would be like the low end of time i spend researching but there are times where i'll have to devote 
an hour or two hours for several days of the week before I have the episode all put together. Because um, I don't write it all out. Like I don't. I don't want you guys to think we don't. We're not scripted. Like I don't. I don't write down what I'm going to say. I take a lot of notes so that I have times. I, I'm not. I don't have a good brain for times. Like the year that things happened mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. I really don't have a good mind for that. So I have to have like the dates of stuff pretty clearly laid out so that I remember the timeline and the major points. And then, like I said, I just read and read and read until I can talk within that timeline. Uh, Florence Johnson asks us to acknowledge them. So that is, I'm doing that now. Um, We acknowledge you, Florence. acknowledge you, Florence. Thank you for your presence. (laughs) You are here. You are alive. You are vital. Um, Why is Justin making a face like he's about to eat a spoonful of mayo? It's just because the angle, the computer's down here, so I'm looking like downcast because I'm reading um, the questions as they come in. Hmm. Also, he's been doing this for like an hour and 40 minutes. And um, is that enough, or do you want to keep talking? Um, or are you going to check the time? It's right there. It's 11 no, seven. I was going to check to see where our, where our donors are at. Oh, yeah, do that. See if we've helped. Did we help? <laughs> Did we help? Oh my god. What is it? 19,243. Y'all, it's popping off. You guys are great. Um, That uh, is amazing. It's amazing. Y'all are amazing. If you haven't donated yet, (laughs) maximumfun.org. What? (laughs) Three more questions. Three more questions. All right. (laughs) Three more questions. There's our arbitrary number. Three more questions. (laughs) Um, If you haven't up your pledge yet, do this. Um. Justin, if you had to choose between one extra or one fewer testicles, which would you choose? One extra? This feels like a question from a bim bam. Yeah, one extra. That's easy. That's it? That's all you got? Just one extra? One extra. Better you than know you fewer. don't need another. Yeah, but then I could, like, imagine the it would give me a lot of negotiating power, I think. Because <laughs> they wouldn't know. Are like, you going to trade for it? Well, Justin, is that your final offer? And I'd be like, you tell me. And the facial expression uh-huh. in their head, they'd be like, this does man, he have a third this ball? This man has an extra testicle. Does he have a third ball right now? He, he talks like a guy with an extra testicle. It's, it's, someone asked if it's 10 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock here. EST. Um... um. Someone asked if we'd ever do a Bummers Only episode. I've been trying to clarify this, so I want to do it here, too. Bummer, No Bummers is a rule we made it from live shows because it can kill the momentum of a live show, and it's really hard to pull it out. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Bummers on our podcast. Like, I don't... I, I'm fine with, like... I think it's really important and valuable and worthwhile to talk about mm-hmm. Bummers, which is, which is part of, like, growing up, I think, is, like, you have to realize that. Um, but that's just a live show thing. By and large, I'm fine talking about bummers. I think if, the only thing is, I think it's good if both parties are, like, down to talk about bummers. Because sometimes you don't, ain't no one gonna break my stride. You know, sometimes you don't, you're not down for it. Which I think is part of your rationale with live shows. A lot of times when people come to a live show, that's not, yeah, that's not the mindset that they're in. They're not, you know, they're, they're kind of there to, like, party and have fun and, and that's part of it, too. Um, will there be any new things I bought at Sheets? Yeah. For sure, right? Actually, uh, for um, sure. I'm trying, da- Dwight and I are texting right now to make some plans for projects. I'm texting right now. Dwight is one of our oldest and dearest friends. We, we truly enjoy hanging out with Dwight, like, not just for Justin's weird YouTube show. That's right. I'm going to ask him to send a pic to just show he to show proof of life. Charlie uh, calls Dwight Uncle Dwight. Like, I, I, did you tell her to say that? No. It's just her thing. I don't know how she has gleaned that, but she calls him Uncle Dwight, even though, I mean, like, technically he's not related to us, but we love Dwight. Why did we end Satellite Dish... If I can be really honest, it was a lot of TV to watch, and we just, we got, we got to a point where we were sitting down and wanting to spend time, like, I mean, literally doing anything else, or even just, like, talking to each other, because we'd had a busy week, and we just kind of wanted to reconnect, 
and we found ourselves like, well, but we have this list of TV shows we got to watch so that we can talk about them on Fat Dish. And that was part of it was just like, ah, we can't, there is, we don't have enough room in our life right now for this much television. We love television. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop loving television. We do. Um, you just have to make, you have to, it has to take up the right amount of space in your life. And we didn't have enough space to do a podcast about it. Yeah. Maureen wants to be our butler. <laughs> I don't have a butler. I can use a butler. Yeah, I'd be down for it. I get really scared when somebody rings the doorbell because I don't know who it is. So I could, I would appreciate that help. <laughs> Unless it's a package, I'm okay with that because they leave before I have to interact. But favorite time wasting app or game? I'll let Sydney answer, even though I know her answer. Mine is probably uh, you must build a boat. Is a great one. Um, if you haven't played through it in a while, that's a classic match three, dungeon crawler kind of thing. I love that game. We played it maybe once a year. Sydney, what's yours? Blendoku. Blendoku. Sydney's favorite. I love Blendoku. The hardest part is I've done all the levels for your phone, and now I'm on the tablet levels, but there I'm playing them on my phone. That's very difficult. <laughs> I don't have a tablet, but I'm getting them done, which is what matters. Okay, Dwight just sent in a fresh proof of life picture. This is coming in hot. <laughs> I, told, <laughs> I told Dwight to send a proof of life picture. Here's Dwight. <laughs> he's, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> yeah, Dwight's doing good. Dwight was actually Griffin's boss. Yes. That's a true story. That's a true story. Yeah. Pretty much That it. was all true. Yeah. I mean, pretty much how you guys laid it out. Like, there was, there was nothing about that. That was, I mean, that was, he, Griffin worked for Dad and for Dwight, because Dwight still works for Dad. And uh, Griffin was not, not the best employee. A few people said he looks like Episode 7 Luke Skywalker, which I think he'll be happy to hear. Um... Mm -hmm. MaximumFun.org forward slash donate is the place to go. Um, while Jeremy Frank's in here, I want to thank Jeremy Frank for all his hard work uh, contributing to the Maximum Fun Network and also this chat. He's a, a good fella. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. How'd I meet Dwight? Dwight was a theater major at the same time I was at Marshall. Uh, and we, me and Dwight and Jason Eldridge, who is in episode two of Movement Bam, and Don DiGiulio, who took the bottle of vodka from me, and Michael Beck, who and I... And also starred in Dark Harvest. And also starred in Dark Harvest, and Michael Beck, who I based Taco's voice on, uh, and um, other friends, Brian Barth and John Mahaffey, and, and other cats, John Mahaffey whose house Travis lived in while filming Movin' Bam. It's all connected. Um, and the uh, we all used to hang out in college together. That's pretty much the whole thing. And I met Dwight, of course. Through, through me, yeah. Yeah. I called him Chris. And he still does not let me live that down. Because I met him once at Michael Beck's party. And then I met him again at Michael Beck's party. And... Now, I mean, there was maybe some beer involved, and I, he said, do you remember my name? And I may have said Chris, because I didn't, and I still, to this day, he doesn't let me live that down. Uh, any particular reason we're doing the Q&A? Yes, it's so you'll donate mm -hmm. to Maximum Fun. It's a <laughs> podcast network. You can go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Because we're trying to get 20000 and we're, we're doing what it, whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, by the way, this t-shirt isn't very flattering. I've realized a couple times when the camera's panned up. But, like, honestly, I'm on that slow carb. I'm doing my best. You know, this is the body I have right now, and I have to love it. But, like... I love it. Well, thank you, sweetheart. I'm, I appreciate that. But I'm trying not to be self-conscious. But, like, it's also... I'm, the shirt kicks ass. It just... I don't... Yeah. 
it's just it's not hugely flattering. So I just saw all these other people on the network doing AMAs, and I asked Justin how you do those. Because I don't mind answering questions. Yeah. And our baby's asleep, and it's been like a nice way to spend the evening. Yeah, it has been nice, actually. I know. We've really enjoyed talking to you guys. There's, there's nothing, better than, nothing better than talking about yourself. <laughs> you're not drinking enough. Also, you're just kind of leaving that lingering. I know. I'm taking it slow. I mean, that was a not-so-subtle hint that you should pick it up and drink it. Mm-hmm. You can... Where, what are you drinking tonight, Cindy? What's your beer uh, in the glass? It's, uh... Oh, you just got it. It's new. New Belgium... Rogue something? No. No. It's an IPA. New Belgium. Hmm. It's a new New Belgium that has a skeleton on it. Something IPA. IPA. New New Belgium IPA. It's got a skeleton on it. Justin got me one of those beer thingies that you put your beer in and then you it turns it into a tap. Yeah. Beer uh, Hey. Oh, Michelle's got a good one. Hold on. My girlfriend's a fan. Help me propose by saying this. Okay, I'll say it. Hey, Alana, will you marry that thug, Michelle? There. I hope you're married now. Or at least... Yeah, Alana. Voodoo Ranger. Thank you, Craig. Please marry Michelle. Did did it work? Hey, Alana, will you marry that thug, Michelle? I hope you're engaged now. I hope it worked. What made us change our mind on addressing more modern uh, alternative medicine stuff on Sawbones? I think it worked. Look at all those excited things. I hope that that worked. Uh, well, let me say this. The, the reason we did that for the bonus episode was because it is a little out of... Um, we, we talked about goop on the bonus episode for those of you guys who don't know. So I guess that's the most modern thing we did. And a lot of that was just, um, people ask us about, I oh, get a lot said of, yes, a lot of people are yay! saying, yay, yay, congratulations, oh. y'all. Yay. Sorry. Yay. Ooh, congratulations. Yay. Let us know what it is. Yeah. Send, <laughs> send pictures, send an invite. We get lots of wedding invites. We'll try to come to this one. And also, if you're going to send us a wedding invite, please put a phone number in there because we, like to We'd call. Like to call you. Yeah. Um. Now we for the for the bonus episode we a lot of people ask me about stuff that Gwyneth Paltrow suggests and mm. it's not that some of it doesn't really have like a history that I could like I couldn't do a whole episode on it it would be a little you know couple minute thing uh, and so I thought that would make a good episode where I just kind of like I went through there on a on a lark just to see what's there and found lots of craziness. Um, if it it has to fit the criteria, I'll tackle it. If it is something that has a longer history, if it's just brand new, it doesn't really. It's not what we what we do, I guess. Um, oh. But I I like to if I do think it's dangerous, if I do think that it's something educational or important, I'll try to do that. Justin knows that. I'm always trying to balance that. Where I feel like if it is something like that, like that's why we did vaccine. If it's something that's really important, I want I want to use this opportunity to make you laugh, hopefully get you interested, and also tell people something important that maybe I think they need to know. Yeah, I think that in in the modern climate, um, we realized that we had a burden of education in... in Taking off my glasses. Yeah, to make in addition to entertainment. Like, we felt really strongly that if we have uh, people who are listening to us, we should be trying to say true things. Mm-hmm. Um, and try to put more true things into the world, and uh, especially about science. And so we wanted to try to, to approach that. I've become much less gracious about... Um, there's, a, there's a great episode of uh, Bullshit, the Penn and Teller show, um, and it's the episode about recycling, where they talk about this... Um, I, I forget where they... I think it's sourced to, like... You talking about Grigri's? Grigri's, yeah. Everybody's got to have a Grigri. Mm-hmm. And it's like the thing that you know that isn't true. But, but you like, know it. You know it. You know it's not true, but it's also the thing you kind of believe in. And we used to take, and, and that was like, we used to have a very open mind about that stuff. Like, well, everybody's got to have a Grigri. You know, everybody's got to have that. And and maybe to an extent that's still true. But um, we're a lot less hesitant about sort of trying to be truthful and 
talk about that sort mm-hmm. of thing now um, than, you know, we're not as worried about upsetting people about their fake thing, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> if, I think it, if I think it's harmful, if I think it's harmful, you know. Or even if it's not. I mean, we put oil pull in, like, we put well, stuff on blast. Yeah. That's true. I guess yeah. that's true. I don't like I don't like people lying. <laughs> I don't like people making this stuff up. And I don't like people believing that I, because some people did things a thousand years ago, just because no. ideas are tenacious doesn't mean they're yeah. worthy. That that is a good that's a good point. And the other thing is too, I I hear a lot like, well, doctors just want you to do this or that because of money, or they want you to take these meds because of money. And I I I see that played out over and over and over again. And it's very frustrating to me because it's not. It's not how it works. I mean, for me, it's not, like, that's, one, that's not what it's about. Two, it's not tied to that. It doesn't work that way. And so I think, you know, when I see something that, oh, you're ripping people off, you're convincing them that this is going to do these miraculous things for them, and it's not really, and maybe it isn't harmful, but you're also just ripping them off, I think I get a little more sensitive to that now because mm-hmm. I think, you know, I, I, as a physician, get accused of that. I feel unfairly often and so I'm a lot quicker to call out when that happens somebody asked what CJ looks like we're gonna need a quick pan that's that's CJ's section of the couch CJ Reno hey big girl there's Amelia back there Amelia's Amelia's there we have not touched Amelia since she came to live with us this is this is truth um, we, uh, we love well, Amelia we love very much. Daughter. She let us touch her. She was a, they're both rescues. And, um, Amelia was sick and she got better. Everything's okay. But when we first got her, she let us hold her. And then after like the first couple of weeks that she got better, I have she wouldn't let us touch her. I don't know if she's feral. I don't know, but she won't. But, uh, her and CJ get along great and they cuddle and they hug and they sleep together. And when we have to go on trips or something, I know that they're not lonely because they have each other, so. We, uh, CJ is named after CJ Craig, the press secretary on the West Wing. Um, Amelia used to be named Toby, the communications director. Um, right? Is that right? Yeah. Still Sam Seaborn. Toby's mm-hmm. communications director, mm-hmm. though, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And, Amelia and was Toby Amelia until was Toby. The, her first visit to the vet. At which point, it turns out she was actually Amelia, uh-huh. um, and uh, that's from Doctor Who, obviously. Amelia Pond. So, Amelia Pond. So yeah. CJ can't wrap the jackal. Hmm. CJ's a cat. <laughs> that's ludicrous. What are you even talking about? CJ was. We debated between CJ and Anya from Buffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, until we got her, and then we looked at her and decided she looked like a CJ. She I don't know. Like I don't CJ. know what a CJ cat looks like, but. That's a CJ cat, I guess. That's a CJ cat. Mm-hmm. What's the best cereal for nighttime? You know? <laughs> well, this is going to be the rest of the night. If I can get wistful for a second. Um, I have thought about this a lot, and I think that, like, my personal favorite cereal is actually very simple. It's just Quaker Oat Squares. Mm-hmm. Simple, not too sweet. Uh, a huge crunch, though. Very filling. Um, but you know what? If I'm going sweet... The best, the cereal that I could eat, like, ad infinitum is, is Fruity Pebbles. I could eat, I could eat, I don't think I've ever been like, that's enough Fruity Pebbles for me right now. Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is also, uh, very amazing. It's a very amazing cereal. It's really cereal. good on frozen yogurt, too. Um, yeah, so those Captain are Captain Crunch is my answer. Yeah. It's my uh, favorite. It lacerates your mouth stuff. I know, but it tastes so good. I don't eat cereal almost ever, but if I'm going to. I don't know if Josh Whedon listens to our podcast. I don't believe so. Um, you can just tweet I mean, at him if and... you could let him know about it. Yeah. I mean, arrange maybe a meeting. Yeah. I saw Patton Oswalt once at uh, San Diego... No, at San Francisco Sketch Fest. And I saw him once, but he was, like, playing with his daughter. So I didn't want to... Didn't want him fr- in, no, in French. I wouldn't have either. He's great too. He's great I too. I follow him on Twitter. I like him. God, now I want cereal so bad. Not till me. Saturday. Saturday's a cheat day. Saturday. Justin's gonna take me out for my belated birthday. Yep. We're gonna go to a very great local burger restaurant called the Peddler. 
I'm going to eat a burger that has banana and peanut butter and cream cheese and bacon on it. Call a brass monkey. It sounds like it doesn't work, but it does. How many times have we seen trolls? I, I, I have no answer. Literally. I mean. It, uh, conservatively, I don't even know. 30 times? At least more. I mean, because we've seen trolls over and over again. And then before we had trolls in a lag between when it was on, in the theater and when it was released on, like, I don't know, not DVD, whatever. It appeared on our TV legally. Uh we watched every YouTube video that had a clip from it, every trailer of it, every anything with trolls. Yeah. With Moana, um, before Moana came out on Video On Demand, uh, Charlie really wanted to see Baby Moana, Moana, and we ended up watching the Chinese, I think it was the Chinese version of the Moana trailer mm -hmm. because it had baby Moana in it for the whole thing. Um, we watched every language trailer of Moana over and over and over again. Um, I was so thankful when it came out. Yeah. It's a good movie too. If you haven't seen it yet, everybody should. It's great. Yeah. Moana is amazing. You should see it. It's Trolls, all... Trolls actually, it's really it's grown, grown on, on me. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. The music's really great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about watching Sing and maybe going to see Boss Baby tomorrow. I really want to see really Boss Baby. Are we really going to see Boss Baby? I really, she, she wants to. I know she wants. She loves stuff with Baby. She'll be cute. Okay. Those movies don't get made. They're so expensive. They don't get made unless they're going to be hits. Can I have poppycorn? Yeah, you have popcorn. Moana. My favorite Moana song is... Mm -hmm. Um... Mm, where you are or how far I'll go or shiny they're all really good I was playing where you are like on the guitar today actually I was trying to learn that one um I would play it for you if our baby wasn't asleep because it's it's come along nicely I think I really like where you are yeah I mean I know I know how far I'll go is the, the big song from where you are I, is I interesting like because like are. I it's like supposed to be a contrast to the theme of the thing but it's the one I agree I with connect like, to, no 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 I connect to too. listen to Chief Tui you should stay here Charlie yeah, you can find happiness you can here. find happiness here in don't Huntington, move in living with your mommy and daddy for all time <laughs> yeah that listen to Chief Tui he knows what's up yeah I really like that and I like coconuts a lot um, someone said Boss Baby is 90 minutes of animated Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross references, and hello, yes, please, I'll be there. Are you Here's fans of By the Concords? Yes. Yes. For yes. Sure. Here's the thing. There is no movie that Charlie could, I don't want to say make us go to, but that we could go to because of Charlie that could be worse than the movie that we had to go to because of Riley. Mm -hmm. What was that movie? Son of Mask. Son of Mask. When Riley was little... We took her to see Son of Mask. It was terrible. We were the only ones in the theater. And there was a moment where a baby, where the mask <laughs> baby, the baby that has been infested and has been possessed, has been <laughs> taken over by the spirit of mask, <laughs> the mask. The mask. Um, starts peeing. Not mask, that's Rocky Dennis. The, the mask. Baby, starts peeing on his parents. And... The, it's like the classic, like, oh, he's peeing on us. There's a stream of pee. It's so cute. And then there's like two streams of pee. And then there's like four streams of pee. And there's all these streams of pee shooting up in the parent's face, just like covered in urine. And then a giant, like, hose of urine, like a column, like a giant of urine, just like, who is Jamie Kennedy? Yeah. In the face. And Riley made us see that movie. And I don't know that I'll ever. I never forgive her. Forgive her. For Remember, that. she was very little. She was very. Like she was little. She was little. Um, if you've if you've had a good time tonight, it would really mean the mm -hmm. world to us if you could head over to maximumfund.org forward slash donate, and uh, kick in some money towards our our drive. Um, we've been at this for like two hours now. Certainly, we've earned earned your donation. I hope. And some sleep. And some sleep. But um, thank you all for yeah yeah thank you all for hanging out. This has been so much fun. Um, we really uh, do appreciate you, and we really appreciate everybody who's kicked in some money. 
Just five. Yeah, thank you uh, guys You know what? I'll give you the pitch. For five bucks a month, you can get a days upon days of bonus content. Um, and there's a bonus, like we said, it's all bonus about goop and about the med- the future of medicine and, and there's an a, ASMR episode. An a- ASMR episode. There's a con, there's a, um, commentary track for the, uh, the two and a half. The last episode of two and a half men. Two and a half men finale for 10 bucks a month. It's our Losing the Sheen revival yeah, episode. Yeah, you get, you get, uh, all you that. You get the, plus the new episode of The Adventure Zone, mm-hmm. which I think is great all in itself. Yeah, two of them. Actually, yeah, yeah. The, bonus the, the second one has Len, yeah. Manuel and Miranda, who uh, he wrote. Uh, Mary had uh, Murray had a little lamb on Sesame Street. If you're wondering where he's from, also Hamilton. But also Murray had Murray a had a little lamb. And uh, for twenty dollars a month, you can get the pin and the most material, and also uh, a keep in touch kit with stationery and candles and. Etc. And for so, thirty five bucks a month you get all that plus a couple cool beer mugs. Maximum dot org. Beer mugs. Maximum dot org forward slash donate. It's not about the gifts though, it's about supporting the network. That's why we've been doing this with you. Um if you had fun, tweet at us, I guess, and let us know and um donate to Max Fun, let them know that's why you're donating. And um Thank you to everybody who's, like, kicked in during the stream. Thank you. Yeah, you're all... Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in and asking this question. Top notch. And that is going to do it for us. Sydney, do you have any last words you want to impart before I click the stop streaming button? Um, no. Just keep being your wonderful selves. Thank you. Hang in there. Is that good? Yeah. That's like a good thing to Hang say. Hang in there. Hang in there. Like the cat? Keep... Keep like on the, trucking. Oh, like the cat. You mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Love you. Take care of yourselves and each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>